Imagine a plane so fast it could outrun missiles. So advanced, it looked like it came straight out of a science fiction movie. The SR-71 Blackbird, America's legendary spy plane, still holds the title of the fastest jet ever built. Even though it was retired in the 1990s for satellites and drones, no modern aircraft has surpassed the Blackbird's incredible speed. Join us as we dive into the fascinating history and unmatched capabilities of the SR-71 Blackbird. Hit that subscribe button and let's get started. In the escalating tension of the 1950s Cold War, the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, deployed the U-2 spy plane to monitor the Soviet Union's rapidly growing nuclear arsenal. The U-2, though awkward and slow, relied on its ability to fly at very high altitudes to evade enemy fighters and early surface-to-air missiles. In 1962, U-2 intelligence revealed Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba, igniting the Cuban Missile Crisis. However, the U-2 couldn't always soar high enough to avoid Russian SA-2 missiles, leading to serious diplomatic conflicts. In 1960, a U-2 was downed, and pilot Gary Powers was captured, causing a major diplomatic scandal. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, another U-2 was shot down, resulting in the pilot's death and intensifying the standoff between Moscow and Washington. Additionally, five Taiwanese U-2s were downed over China. By 1957, American engineers recognized that altitude alone was insufficient for defense. They began designing a plane for the CIA that could elude Soviet radar and outpace any missiles. This effort led to the creation of the Lockheed Skunk Works A-12, also known as Archangel. Tested first in 1962 at Area 51, 15 A-12s were eventually built. These CIA-operated A-12s conducted 29 reconnaissance missions over North Korea and Vietnam until 1968 under Operation Black Shield, losing six aircraft to accidents. The intelligence gathered by the A-12 was crucial in mapping North Vietnamese air defenses and locating the USS Pueblo after its capture by North Korea. The Air Force explored several variants, including the YF-12 interceptor and a proposed high-speed bomber, the B-71, which followed the XB-70 Valkyrie bomber in sequence. Additionally, there was the unusual M-21 drone carrier, which launched D-21 spy drones from its back. Despite these innovative prototypes, none made it to active service. Ultimately, the A-12 was phased out in favor of the Air Force's SR-71 variant. The Blackbird maintained speeds exceeding Mach 3, holding an unmatched manned flight record of Mach 3.3, Though pilot Brian Skull claimed to have hit Mach 3.5 while evading a missile over Libya in 1986, this achievement is remarkable, especially since later Soviet MiG-25 and MiG-31 fighters could reach Mach 3 only for short bursts using afterburners, akin to a brief, energy-intensive sprint. In contrast, the SR-71 could cruise at Mach 3 for 90 minutes before needing in-flight refueling. Notably, a Blackbird set a record by flying from New York to London in just 1 hour and 54 minutes. By the time a SAM missile system could lock onto an SR-71 flying at Mach 3 and launch, the Blackbird had already outpaced the missile's effective range. Lockheed didn't rely solely on speed to evade threats. The SR-71 was the first operational aircraft designed with a reduced radar cross-section, lowering the chances of detection. Its distinctive chines, the sharp, tapered edges of the fuselage, were coated with early radar-absorbent iron ferrite paint to reduce radar visibility further. Additionally, these chines provided extra lift and enhanced aerodynamic stability. However, the Blackbird didn't meet modern stealth standards. It had a radar cross-section of 10 square meters, which Soviet radars could still detect. Additionally, the intense heat exhaust from the SR-71's engines created turbulence in the air, making it visible to radar. To counter these vulnerabilities, the Blackbird was equipped with a radar jammer and various electronic countermeasures to confuse enemy missiles. Impressively, it could sustain flights at 85,000 feet, an altitude record still unbroken. The SR-71 also used an astro-inertial navigation system, relying on the stars to determine its precise location. The first operational SR-71 squadron was established in 1968 at Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan. Locals dubbed the aircraft Habu, after a type of pit viper, a nickname that stuck with Blackbird pilots. 
The SR-71 flew numerous reconnaissance missions over Vietnam. Despite its impressive performance, adversaries were improving their capabilities. American pilots soon realized that the Blackbird's reduced radar cross-section wasn't enough to evade detection completely. Russian-made radars could track the Habu and launch missiles at it. However, the SR-71's incredible speed proved a reliable defense. Approximately 800 missiles were fired at Blackbirds over Vietnam, but none were downed by enemy fire. However, one CIA-operated A-12 did suffer shrapnel damage from an SA-2 missile that detonated 100 meters away. Over the next three decades, Blackbirds conducted over 3,500 reconnaissance missions across the Middle East, North Africa, Europe, and Asia. Despite losing 11 SR-71s in accidents, with all but one pilot surviving, none were ever downed by enemy fire. One notable mission was recounted by Blackbird pilot Colonel James Shelton Jr., who flew an extraordinary 11.5-hour sortie to capture images of Israeli military positions during the Yom Kippur War. During this mission, he crossed Egyptian airspace and was tracked by numerous radar sites and interceptors, yet none could catch up. The photographs he took revealed that Israeli forces were deeper into Egyptian territory than claimed, prompting the US to pressure Israel into withdrawing its troops. Blackbirds undertook reconnaissance missions near the Russian coastline, skillfully evading the Mach 3 MiG-25 fighters dispatched to intercept them. Soviet defector Viktor Belenko recounted in his biography MiG Pilot how Blackbird pilots would playfully taunt the MiG-25s, ascending to altitudes unreachable by the Soviet jets or zooming away at speeds the Russians couldn't match. Despite its prowess, the SR-71 had notable drawbacks. It was costly to operate, with estimates suggesting over $100,000 per flight hour. Additionally, the high-speed flights necessitated extensive maintenance, often requiring a week of repairs between missions as the extreme conditions caused parts of the aircraft to detach or loosen. More significantly, spy satellites and drones could perform these strategic missions initially assigned to the SR-71. The Blackbird, built with 1960s technology, lacked a data link to transmit intelligence back to base in real time, making it less ideal for urgent data needs. The SR-71 was first retired in 1989, but three were briefly reactivated in 1994. Despite efforts by politicians like Senator John Glenn to keep the program alive, the high operating costs of the small fleet led the Air Force to prioritize other projects. The SR-71 was ultimately retired in 1998, followed by NASA's retirement of its two Blackbirds the next year. For years, rumors circulated about an even faster spy plane named Aurora, but its existence seems doubtful now. Instead, the Pentagon now relies on drones and satellites to survey heavily defended areas, avoiding the risks associated with manned aircraft. The still-classified RQ-180 Global Hawk stealth drone currently under deployment, is expected to be the Blackbird's true successor. The Air Force still uses the venerable U-2 from the 1950s for intelligence gathering in regions without surface-to-air missile threats. Heavily upgraded, the U-2 continues to fly photo reconnaissance missions over Iraq, outlasting its intended successor by decades. Yet, the Blackbird's reign as the Speed Queen will likely continue for the foreseeable future.